Hello, I'm Paul Weston. Now, how unsurprising was it to discover that the uh, COVID-19 vaccine fanatic Dr. Ranjit Singh, uh, or Dr. Ranj as he was known on the telly, was on the AstraZeneca payroll to the tune of £22,500. And when the AstraZeneca jab was first pulled from the market in Britain, uh, Dr. Ranj expressed great dismay and the following clip was filmed before his corruption came to light. So why is there this massive reaction all of a sudden? If you're prone to clotting, is it something you need to be worried about or do you just go, this has got nothing to do with it, stop worrying? There is no evidence that the vaccinations increase your risk of clots. Uh, Instagram doctors were all over our TV in 2021 telling us lies. Uh, here is BBC regular uh, Dr Sarah Kayat, yet another one of these permanently excited vaccine fanatics with mad eyes. Well, what's really excellent is, uh, and it's a statistic that I think should be shouted from the rooftops, is that um, after 12 days from the first vaccination of the AstraZeneca vaccine, you are 100% effective against hospitalisation and death. So, you know, those are the statistics we need to be hearing. Why, and yes, haven't, we, why so, haven't we heard that yeah. before? <laughs> well, here I am. <laughs> Dear God, the stupidity, uh, the lies, and most importantly, the, the, the childishness of these dreadful people. And another TV doctor was Sarah Jarvis, Dr Jarvis, who cropped up all over the telly, uh, notably on the particularly revolting uh, Jeremy Vine show. And Dr Jarvis took £65,000 from Big Pharma between 2020 and 2023, and four and a half thousand of that came from AstraZeneca. Uh, here she is interviewed in 2021. And five to 11 year olds can now uh, receive the COVID vaccination. Um, what is your reaction to that? Is that um, the, the way forwards? I think it is important that young people are vaccinated because they can pass it on, particularly to older and really vulnerable people. We know that the vaccine has a very, very low incidence of side effects. My what I find so disgusting about this doctor is her willingness to damage children in return for money. And a circulating virus is an act of nature. Old and ill people naturally die from such natural things. But children were at no risk from COVID-19. So deliberately injecting them with a vaccine with known dangerous side effects is not an act of nature. It's an act of man. And promoting and supporting such an action is an act of the devil. Now, Dr. Jarvis witted on about rare side effects, but what does rare actually mean in medical terminology? Well, it means anything between 1 in 1,000 to 1 in 10,000. So if 10 million children are vaccinated, it means somewhere between 1,000 to 10,000 of them will suffer side effects, uh, and that's up to and including death, maiming and long-term injury. In normal times, doctors do not actively promote the guaranteed damage of children in the hope that it might help to protect the elderly. It is absolutely against all medical ethics and it grinds the Hippocratic Oath of first do no harm into the dust. Any doctor capable of using their position to promote the damage of children in return for money should not just be struck off the medical register, they should be arrested, prosecuted and jailed. And only a few decades ago, uh, they might well have been hanged. And on that note, I come to ITV's Dr Hilary Jones. Now here he is in December 2021, lying to a particularly credulous woman who repeats his lies whilst clapping like a seal. So, you know, those people who haven't been vaccinated, we'd really love you to think Please. again and be vaccinated because 90% oh, of people in hospital are unvaccinated right now. With COVID. That's a really figure that we have to really concentrate on. 90% yeah. of people in hospital have not been vaccinated. Yep. I say lies because according to NHS statistics, only 36% of hospital patients were unvaccinated at that time, uh, rather than 90%. And this misinformation or disinformation uh, was not picked up by Ofcom. Uh, you will be equally unsurprised to hear. Why was Dr Hilary Jones so dishonestly keen on getting the vaccine into all of us? And why did Dr Hilary set up Frontline Doctors Limited in December 2021? 
Uh, what did he promise his investors, who stumped up some one and a quarter million pounds to this slippery doctor? And was it something to do with the stratospheric rise in the share price of companies manufacturing the very COVID vaccines pushed by Dr. Hillary? And here is Dr. David Strain arguing with the very good and decent Professor Angus Dalgleish on GB News about jabbing five to 11 year olds. And Dr. Strain is the typically mad-eyed creature on the right. And I won't bore you with the entire video. It's, it, it's linked in the description box below. But how much blood money did Dr. Strain take from Big Pharma? Uh, £140,000 uh, over three years, 23000 from AstraZeneca. And sadly, it's not just individual doctors who are wickedly corrupt. It's the entire British medical institution in their entirety. In 2023, the UK Health Security Agency, uh, previously known as Public Health England before it was militarised, uh, along with so much else post-Covid, uh, put out a video featuring Dr Nurina Abdul Aziz, which encouraged pregnant women to take the mRNA vaccine in order to protect their babies. Now, again, this sort of unprecedented advice is so far removed from standard medical practice, uh, it caused me to wonder why the UK HSA could possibly recommend such a thing. Well, here's your answer. Between 2020 to 2023, uh, the UK HSA accepted around half a million pounds from Big Pharma, a lot of it from Pfizer. And here's the University College London Hospital's NHS Foundation Trust, which took over a million pounds from Big Pharma over the Covid years, and notably from Pfizer and AstraZeneca. And what of the NHS itself? You know, delving into the database revealed an absolute horror show of corruption. Here are the three opening pages of named doctors involved in consultancy work for Big Pharma. And here's a page of Abdul's. Now let's take a random Abdul and see what comes up. I'll pick Abdul Jahangir top right. There you go. Close to £4,000 from AstraZeneca. I could go on. There are hundreds of these pages and thousands of doctors' names and finding one without Pfizer or AstraZeneca payments is no mean achievement. The corruption is off the scale. Now, why doesn't Britain's Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, or MHRA, do something about this corruption, you might ask? And the answer is because the MHRA received over £13 million from Bill Gates over the last few years. Why doesn't the British media tell you about this medical scandal? Answer, because the BBC, Daily Telegraph, Guardian, etc. all receive multi-million pound funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And that's not to mention uh, that the media watchdog Ofcom is run by Dame Melanie Dawes, who is firmly in bed with the World Economic Forum, including their countering digital hate censorship vehicle, where hate actually means inconvenient truth. And Melanie Dawes, of course, was behind the removal of genuine truth-teller Mark Stein from GB News. So why doesn't the British government do something about our corrupt health industry, you might ask? And the answer, sadly, is that most of the politicians may well be, may well be, deeply corrupt as well. I mean, look at them here scurrying out of the House of Commons when the brave and honourable MP Andrew Bridgen stood to talk about vaccine damage. Take note of the white-haired chap who skedaddles, bent almost double, after instructing other MPs to leave the floor. Andrew Bridgen. Mr Deputy Speaker, on the 13th of December last year, I was kindly granted an adjournment debate on the potential harms that emergency use experimental mRNA COVID-19 vaccines cause. It's fair to say that night my life changed. What a truly disgusting shower these politicians are, and one wonders how many of them are on Big Pharma's payroll. And the skedaddling MP, by the way, is the Right Honourable Andrew Mitchell. <laughs> right Honourable. What a perverse description that is. And here he is with vaccine billionaire Bill Gates, and here again with Bill Gates at a Gavi conference. 
and Gavi, incidentally, is the Gates-funded uh, Vaccine Alliance, a public-private organisation which pretty much controls global vaccines alongside the World Health Organisation. And here is the Right Honourable Andrew Mitchell with WHO head honcho Tedros Ghebreyesus. So why doesn't British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak do something about corrupt British politicians? And well, the answer is that he might possibly be corrupt as well. You know, here he is talking about vaccines. Uh, to what he was more broadly insinuating, let me be unequivocal from this dispatch box that COVID vaccines are safe, yes. Mr Speaker. There are so many lies and so many crimes around all of this. And if we lived in a true democracy, our courts would be crammed and our prisons overflowing with doctors, politicians, scientists and journalists by now. And the fact that they aren't uh, is testament to the sheer terrifying scale of globalist power. You know, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And during COVID, during the pandemic, they had. They had absolute power. And every institution has been corrupted absolutely. When Dr. Joseph Mengele uh, carried out experiments on Jewish children in concentration camps, he carried out this crime as their sworn enemy. And one has to wonder who is worse, Mengele or British politicians, health institutions and doctors, who in return for a blood-soaked check from the devil are dizzyingly excited to kill, maim and injure children they swore on ancient oath to protect. I published a book recently exposing all things COVID-19. Um, it's succinct and easy to read. The link's in the description box below and uh, it would make an ideal uh, gift for friends and family who are coming round to our way of thinking about the pandemic but are short on the absolute details. Finally, if um, Andrew Bridgen, Dr John Campbell or Russell Brand happen to come across this video, uh, could I ask them to contact me via direct message on Skype? And my address is in the description box below along with my Rumble video account. Thank you very much.